Hello, everybody. We enter into the contents of lecture 10 next. Here we will discuss something much awaited, namely the concept of relativistic mass and its relation to the energy of a relativistic object. Of course, Newtonian mechanics has taught us that for isolated systems, including systems which are colliding with each other or one object is breaking down into two objects, momentum and energy are conserved quantities and these conservation principles are also related to some symmetries of space-time. Even without entering into the issues of such symmetries, at least a starting point in the relativistic formulation of mechanics should be the assumption that each of two frames S and S prime, with which by now we are familiar, momentum conservation should be there. And in some sense, energy conservation should also be there. But then energy, thinking in terms of kinetic energy, involves not only velocity, but also mass. Of course, how velocity transforms under Lorentz transformation is something that we have spent much time on very recently, but mass is a debatable or a questionable proposition. The invariance of mass under Galilean transformation may, in term, may leave scopes for going beyond it, as, as I said, was noted by Newton himself. Even without entering into history, if it is not, then mass can, in general, mass or the proportionality constant between force and acceleration may, in general, be a function of the velocity of an object also. And we start the discussion at least by not discounting that. So let us start by assuming mass is equal to m of v. In the worst case, to achieve consistency, this will be a constant function. So keeping this in mind, we think of a process where an object of mass m0, look at page 54, an object of mass m0 behaves something like a stationary bomb and it explodes by breaking into two equal fragments, each of which in the rest frame of M0 recede in opposite directions, each with uniform velocity, at least that's when we are considering them, uniform velocity is achieved and they're recociating with that velocity in two opposite directions. And uniform velocity being U, let the velocity and let the masses be mu for each of the two fragments which is a fraction a function of u in general let us start and see where it leads to we also assume that momentum is conserved in the process in fact that is what is written right be below this figure where mu is introduced and we also assume that in each frame that you go to not only is momentum conserved, the velocity dependent mass is at least conserved. So when this object M0 breaks into two parts, M0 is equal to twice mu in a sense. But in general, in each frame, rest frame of the particle moving to the left or the one to the right, in each such frame, masses, relativistic masses are conserved. Keeping this in mind, we move on to the rest frame of the mass moving towards left, where M U becomes M0 again, because it is at rest now, so it is different from M U. And the hitherto rest particle, M0, now is moving on to the right with velocity U, and it develops a velocity-dependent mass M U. And similarly, the particle moving to the right in the rest frame of M0 has now velocity v in this frame, and its consequent mass becomes mv. That mu, mv, small m0, 
all are different is an ansatz as it said that's to say in the worst case they will turn out to be equal and constant but we are not disallowing the possibility of their being different so that immediately allows us to calculate v in terms of u using the velocity addition formula we have already developed so i am not going into details of that and then we come back to the conservation principles written down in equation 110 but first in the rest frame of the moving particle on the left side where the particle has a rest mass m not we write the conservation of mass in the upper equation the lower equation asserts the conservation of linear momentum in that frame then goes a little bit of algebra expressing various things in the terms of various things which is very very straightforward once we have got the velocity addition formula 109 and equations 110 is continuously used we gradually move on to the relationship of equation 112 fol following equation 110 and 111 which are basically shuffling around and substituting various functions of various variables in terms of the other but once we arrive at equation 112 we re receive the startling revelation that indeed compared to m0 mv is different what does it mean to start with m0 divided into particles moving in two different directions they were of equal masses so if the rest mass of the fragment on moving to the left is m0 small m0 as we have asserted earlier then for the right moving particle also the mass at rest is small m0 because two equal fragments were created in each rest frame they there is no reason that two directions are different so compared to that m0 that is to the rest mass of one of the fragments the mass when it is moving with velocity v that is to say mv which is the supposedly velocity dependent mass of the particle in the rest frame of the rest left moving particle then mv is m not over 1 over square root of 1 over v squared minus c squared which tells us that there is a relativistic mass which is indeed the function of velocity and as velocity increases the mass increases according to equation 112 of course if v approaches c something inadmissible happens velocity becomes infinity but v equal to c is a natural bar if v for some reason is greater than c then what can be the interpretation of some such particles is something on which i have written an exercise problem for you which is an assignment it is somewhat speculative in character but what hopefully it will give your imagination a little bit of a fillip now what does the relativistic particle means or relativistic mass means this is what we have to assert before we end the discussion we asserted the conservation of momentum in the transformed frame instead of asserting or assuming the conservation of kinetic energy we instead started by assuming the conservation of relativistic mass and that turned out to be a consistent exercise so far so let us probe it a little more mv equals square root of i mean m not over square root of 1 over v squared minus c squared now let us take the now this quantity is conserved for all the three particles the initial particle this value which is nothing but the rest mass of the original particle adds up to the sum of the relativistic masses in the final state particles in any frame that's what we have asserted in our equations so therefore let us see what this conservation principle means in the limit where velocity v is very small compared to c 
So starting from equation 110, which is the conservation equation for the velocity dependent mass, we try to see its interpretation. When V is very small compared to C, we look at the steps leading to equation 114, where the expression n not times one minus v squared over c squared to the power minus half has been simply binomially expanded. And in the limit where v is really small compared to c, it leads to equation 113, keeping the leading terms. This is, you may say, the non relativistic limit. But what is it? It is the rest mass plus the non relativistic kinetic energy. So that tells us that in the non relativistic limit, the total relativistic mass times c squared is nothing but the rest mass times c squared plus the non relativistic kinetic energy. So what we have asserted is that in addition to the kinetic energy, if you add the mass part, that is the total energy that yields the non relativistic limit so easily. And the total energy of an object can be interpreted in the light of 114 as the rest mass energy plus kinetic energy. In the non relativistic limit, V is very small compared to C. Therefore, the kinetic energy is very small and relativistic mass is kept as something constant as good as the rest mass itself because velocity is small and that is simply kept out of the energy conservation equations because that's a constant part on left and right in the limit the mass varying with velocity is neglected so what basically is perceived as happening is that when a particle is given sufficient energy or kinetic energy, its speed leads to the enhancement or reinforcement of its energy, sort of energy pumped into it, and that gets pumped into the mass. A part, which, a part of that gets manifested as kinetic energy, and the rest remains kind of lumped or condensed as part of the modified mass. That is why relativistic mass is higher than the rest mass because the energies, additional energy is condensed in it. This is the origin of the famous formula written in 115 E equal to mc squared. And this additional energy being connected with mass enhancement or mass fall when there is energy released in some process, the final state masses will relativistic masses will add up to a lower value than the initial state masses. This was the underlying principles of nuclear reactions and some such reactions could be utilized in generating huge energies, which at first was perceived as the source of nuclear bombs, which caused the devastation in Hiroshima and Nagasaki and which is being built by many countries for defense purposes now. But on top of that, such energy released can be used for peaceful purposes, such as power generation. In this note, we end today's lecture and remind you of this small exercise at the bottom of page two, page 56, which doesn't require too much of calculation, but requires a little bit of thinking. See you next time. Thank you.